Hi, I'm Stephanie Sirivardhana and I am, uh, I like to define myself as a jack of all trades because I do many, many different things uh, and every day is different, which is what I love about doing what I do. Uh, so I'm here, invited by Hi, to talk about masculinity and I'm very excited. All right. What makes a man a gentleman? So if you look at the origin of the word gentleman, um, so even chivalry, so chivalry and being a gentleman kind of uh, go together. And the origin of that word came from the times of the night. So I would say what makes uh, a man a gentleman is of course, you know, the saying goes, manners make a man. And so that is how you treat people around you. And um, I think that's the most important thing, how you make other people feel and to be considerate um, to, yeah, to put others above yourself. And I don't think that's completely defined to just being a man. I think it's just defined to being a good human. Um, but yeah, I think that's what would make you a gentleman. A true gentleman is someone who is kind, caring, sensitive um, and, and this word sensitive is is important when we talk about you know it in the context of, of of being a gentleman and being manly because you see all women want a man who's in touch with their emotions and romantic and gushes all over them but there are some people who still frown upon the idea of men not being manly enough or you know more of that uh, being strong or don't cry or you know more of the I want to I don't want to say toxic masculinity but the normal stereotypical definition of what it means to be a man you see we are in an age where where it's more important to realize that these labels don't really and shouldn't really um, they shouldn't make us conform to them. We, we have, we, it's more important to be a good human being. And, and, and it's important for us to realize that for a man to be sensitive and, 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 and to want him to be this wonderful, loving, to have him express his emotions positively, if that's what we want, then we need to be okay with him expressing his emotions you know, whether they're anger, whether they're sadness, whether they're hurt, it's important for that expression of emotion to happen as well. And I don't think it's right for us to um, think it's not a masculine trait. Um, so I think it's important that we redefine masculinity and, and I think it's very beautiful when a man is sensitive. Um, so I would say a gentleman is all of those things and just in general, a good human being who values and respects everybody um, as equals. What are the makings of a true gentleman? Certainly not about the flawless craftsmanship of perfectly matched seams, a symmetrical crisp collar, premium buttons or the, the 16 stitches per inch around the cuffs. No, being a gentleman is not something you do for the world, but something that's found within you. Emerald, the gentleman's instinct, the leader in menswear. Oh, yeah, my husband's a lovely man. He's a gentleman. Um, you know, he's, he could be a little more chivalrous in terms of like, you know, I remember <laughs> when we first started dating. Um, so I'm kind of used to guys, you know, maybe opening the door for me and whatnot. So I remember the first time we were um, at the theater practice uh, for Phantom of the Opera. He was Raul, I was Christine. And, uh, so he had walked in through a, a, a door, a swinging door before me. So I assumed he was naturally going to hold the door for me. 
and it kind of <laughs> back to me and I was like what is this um, but yeah in every other aspect he is oh, he's improved by the way now he completely holds the door and whatnot but um, so that's just like the most superficial things that uh, we did we we kind of encompass in the word chivalry um, but where it matters you know putting your loved ones first um, taking care of them, loving them, and being a sensitive soul. I think that's the most important thing, um, to express your emotions. Um, because you see, a lot of times our society tells us um, how we should be like if we identify ourselves with a certain gender. So if you are a woman, you need to be X, Y, and Z. If you're a man, you need to be X, Y, and Z. And the thing is, what I love about my husband is that he breaks all those, um, all those labels that we put on, uh, on ourselves. You know, those gender stereotypes that society gives us. If you're a woman, you need to be sensitive. If you're, but if you're a man, you can be sensitive too. And I think you can hear that from the music that he makes. Um, you know, and um, you know, there is no shame in tears and, and you know, now we see men's fashion where, you know, men wear more flowery clothes and more pink and more fuchsia and before that was frowned upon because it was thought to be so feminine, right? So I think what's so beautiful about and wonderful about my husband is that he goes beyond all these, um, uh, these labels of what masculinity is and um, he's just a wonderful human being. <laughs> it's your actions. Actions speak louder than absolutely every anything. Um, um, and good manners because manners maketh man and that's man in the sense of our, you know, our being as a human being, not just man in the terms of the gender. Um, you know, when you, you you get, it's how you treat others that defines who you are. And uh, yeah, dressing good while being a good human being, always plus points. First impressions are really important. Um, we live in a world, you know, where there are expectations and there are societal norms that we don't have a choice sometimes and we have to conform to, especially in the corporate world. So how you dress, uh, your dress sense there would obviously matter when it comes to your career um, but uh, if it's your personal choice of your personal style yeah I mean I think wear your manners with pride and you know with grace and uh, yeah a good suit or a good fitting outfit will always you know add that little extra X factor to make you shine a bit brighter. Okay, so this is an interesting question because you see when it comes to trends, trends keep changing throughout time, right? We've seen fashion evolve throughout the years, um, you know, and at the end of the day, um, it is marketing and it is this um, consumeristic, this uh, capitalistic system that we live in that defines these trends, right? So it's, it's uh, the big brands that kind of tell us what's in, what's not. It's the fashion weeks, you know, that tell us what's hot or what's not. Um, but at the end of the day, I think you need to dress your truth. And I, I because fashion and the beauty and, and the beauty of fashion is that you get to express yourself. See, it's like a signature. When I, my dad always, when I asked my dad, what's a signature? He said, oh, it's like when you sign it, people will look at it and they will see your personality. So that's exactly what fashion is. People might, before you even speak a word, people will make their judgments on you because it's inevitable. As much as we like to think we don't judge people, um, we always have, you know, that's why first impressions are so important. Um, because immediately you put a list of traits um, to this person that you've seen for the first time. Um, 
and, and you assess all these things based on their body language, based on how they're dressed, based on eventually what they say as well. Um, but at the end of the day, you need to dress what makes you feel confident in your skin, what makes you feel powerful, what makes you feel empowered, because we all resonate with an energy and um, you can call it an aura, you can call it whatever you will, but we all give out an energy. And that's why when you walk into a room, people are either attracted to you or not attracted to you or repulsed by you because we, um, we give out this beacon of sorts, you know, that brings people to you. And, and whatever makes you feel confident and good in your skin is what you should be wearing. And just make sure that it fits you well because a good fit is really important, um, you know, and knowing your body type, it's really important to know what, what type of body you have. So there are normally five boxes you can fall in, even women as well. So identify your body type and dress your body type and make sure the fit is right. And then the nitty gritties of what colors, what styles, what trends, what accessories you wear, that's all based on how you feel and that changes day to day. So dress, you know, dress what you feel good in because at the end of the day, it's you who carries the clothes. It's not the clothes who carry you. Top three Sri Lankan gentlemen. My brothers are not here. Neither is my dad. So they would all be in the list. They're in Canada. Um, and Dushant. I mean, he's here. So Dushant Viraman, first on the list. Uh, Mahela Jayawardana. Uh, and I would say Deepak Shanmuganadhan. Well groomed or a little rough on the edges. Well, the thing is, well groomed is always nice. Um, but rough around the edges is real and I think I resonate more with real <laughs> but that doesn't mean I don't like groomed as well so I guess I go with both can I do that <laughs> yeah I like accessories I really do um, I think men unfortunately don't have have as much um, have as many options as women do like when you look at women's fashion we have incorporated men's stereotypically uh, you know men's fashion to women's wear as well so like back in the day women never wore trousers now we have you know we have you know boss suits and like trousers and it's become a norm whilst men are still stuck to shorts trousers t-shirts um, so yeah they're, they're they're pretty limited <laughs> in terms of the actual uh, what they can wear but I think those are also breaking right now it's like you know in Hollywood you see men uh, you know you saw I saw a few styles where it was like a half dress and a half trouser you know and like you know the Scottish wear kilts you know maybe it's something we could bring in for men I don't know <laughs> we have sarongs which are cool um, but I think accessorizing for men is how they would also show um, their individuality and their personality so I say yeah definitely go for it your socks your you know your type-ins your whatever it is just showcase who you are that's what fashion is about it's about being like this is me hi <laughs> well, it depends on the occasion right like if i'm going to the opera which i love um or going to see a ballet like the swan lake i would love to be with a formal gentleman um, you know, where, you know, you come in and he gives you your flowers and like, uh, you know, the whole, um, you know, the textbook definition of what a gentleman is more formal. Um, but then if it's just like a romantic date or everyday life, uh, a semi-formal gentleman is, is wonderful. It's more than enough, you know, to live your day-to-day -day life with. So that's, it really depends on the occasion.